While Tottenham Hotspur were challenging for European places, Southampton had a very different agenda when the teams met at the Dell in April 1995. The Saints needed a victory to pull clear of the relegation zone. Still fresh in their minds, though, was the 6-2 defeat inflicted by Spurs in the FA Cup earlier that season. With Francis Benali injured and Jeff Kenner transferred to Blackburn, Southampton's defence had an unfamiliar look. Up front, though, Matt Letizier was ready and waiting. Darren Anderton was one of the many Spurs stars on show. Another was Jurgen Klinsmann, their leading scorer. Beside him, Teddy Sheringham on his 29th birthday. Few then had any idea he would celebrate his 40th as a Premier League player as well. Alan Ball Southampton against Jerry Francis' Spurs. Your commentator is Gary Bloom. Southampton get us underway with bright sunshine at the Dell. It's a very bright day all over England today. As Alan Ball taking charge of his 50th league game for Southampton today. And shuddered forward by Charlton. This is Gordon Watson who signed from Sheffield Wednesday for £1.2 million last month. Of course, Southampton have lost Ian Dowie to Crystal Palace already this season. And there is inevitable talk of this man here, Matt Letizia, leaving the club at the end of the season, especially should Southampton be relegated. I'm sure the big fish like Liverpool and Manchester United and Blackburn would come in for him. And a terrific roar around the Dell because Southampton have won their first corner kick of the game. Indeed, the first corner kick of the match. Ken Moncow makes his way forward menacingly here for Southampton. Number five, Richard Hall just behind him. 16, Gordon Watson waiting expectantly inside that Tottenham penalty area. Letitia takes the corner short. He swung over a useful cross to the back post, trying to pick out Richard Hall. Who almost ends up in row A, courtesy of a challenge by Gary Mabbott. Oh, another teasing cross by Letizia. Goodness knows how he knew Hall was on the back post. Rosenthal trying to flick it on. Robla. 14 is Simon Charlton, the left back. Madison. Neil Madison again for Southampton. Great cross. Tried to pick out the head of Gordon Watson and Ian Walker cleverly read that situation spot on. Another clever move this by Southampton. All this great industry and imagination in their attacks. That was a good example of that. Heaney and Charlton can't keep Tottenham out down their right. A rather wasteful effort on goal which didn't trouble Bruce Grobelart from Teddy Sheringham Bruce Grobelart who played against Newcastle on March the 22nd after missing the previous couple of matches after being arrested in connection with match fixing allegations Shipley trying to help the ball on, but Calderwood got it clear before Watson could get there. They really raved about Colin Calderwood's performance in Moscow against Russia whilst representing Scotland. And his first international call-up came at the age of 30-plus for Colin Calderwood. Calderwood has some defending to do now as Southampton have the corner kick. Oh, it's got in! And Heaney scores for Southampton. Well, he scored against Newcastle on March the 22nd. That was his first Premier League goal for the club. And now he's claimed his second one. Letitia inevitably took the dead ball. And it was flicked in. 
virtually right in front of Ian Walker by Neil Heaney. That's Kers Lakes cross, it's a useful looking one too. Here's Anderton. Rosenthal, useful looking cross. It was hit in, I think, by Mabbott in the end. Another unlikely player to have a shot on goal with so much attacking power in front of him. But here comes Southampton on the counter attack. Here's the goal scorer, Neil Heaney. Heaney again. Shipley uh, just couldn't win the ball. He was heavily pleased by the Tottenham defence. Shipley, Watson, Shipley again. Oh, that's a terrific tackle by Gary Mabbott. What a lovely link up here between Shipley and Watson with that clever little header. Watson, locks horns with Howells, Madison takes over, Madison had a major hand in that Southampton goal. It was just the merest of flicks by Heaney which sent it spinning past Ian Walker. This is one for Sheringham to chase, Grobelars straight outside his penalty area, lost the ball. And Teddy Sheringham, the birthday boy, makes it 1-1. Well, once Grobelard committed himself to racing outside his 18-yard box, he had to be more positive than that. And Sheringham scores. Mabbott provided the through ball, but this should have been rather easy for the Southampton defence. Moncow allowed it to run to Grobelard, and maybe that was an error in itself. Just a slight stumble by Grobelar, but Sheringham is a real wily fox in those sort of situations. A real goal poacher supreme, and it's goal number 19 of the season for Teddy Sheringham. Moncao directs the ball down to Simon Charlton, the left back, deputising for Francis Benali. Shipley under pressure from Mabbott. Hoping to lead Tottenham back to Wembley once again. Madison! Good stop by Ian Walker. Well, Neil Madison certainly got hold of that shot. He scored the winner in a 1-0 win against Spurs at the Dell last season. And he was looking to give Southampton the lead here with that terrific volley, which certainly stretched Ian Walker to the full. looks more promising Barmby Rosenthal and the player who terrorized Southampton's defense in the FA Cup here that's a real mess of that shot but this is Klinsman now Madison Heaney arriving to his left Heaney who scored the opening goal of the game Madison No foul by Dean Austin. Referee waves play on. This is Barnby. Oh, he almost came through to Sheringham. Rosenthal. Sheringham ahead of him. Klinsman to his left. There's the German international now. Sheringham. Anderton arriving. Good clearance by Moncow. Klinsman! Shove there by Jürgen Klinsmann. And it was a sort of uh, attacker's 
defensive tackle, wasn't it? Stick to the other end of the park, Jürgen. Letizia with a free kick. It's a poor one. And Watson is infuriated at the quality of the ball in by Matt Letizia. Dodd. He's trying to get the ball outside Kers Lake to Watson. And Southampton will have the throw. Shippley. Oh, Southampton a level. It's Matt Letizia. And it's his first goal in seven matches. Matt Letizia scores his fifth goal against Spurs this season. Shipley tried to help it on. And Letizia thumped the ball past Ian Walker. Just a suspicion of a foul here. There by Letizia as he hands off Mabbott. The referee didn't spot it and the goal stands. Just a minute before half-time. And it was true and on target from the boots of St. Matt, as they call him down here. And it's Rosenthal, of all people, who gets it away. Robola. Oh, what a very good first half it's been. Neil Heaney gave Southampton the lead on 13 minutes. A mistake by Bruce Grobola allowed Teddy Sheringham an equaliser just four minutes later. Then Jürgen Klinsmann with his 25th goal of the season made it 2-1 for Spurs. But Southampton had a reply before the interval. And the goal on 44 minutes came from Matt Letizia to give us a half-time score of Southampton 2, Tottenham 2. These two sides have now scored 12 goals between them in two and three-quarter hours of football. Let's hope we have more in the second half. There certainly is a heady brew every time Southampton meet Tottenham. And goals are certainly on the menu. And he chase on for Gary Mamet at the start of the second half. Heaney almost fell to Shipperley. What a save by Walker to deny Jim Magilton. I think he got a touch. Heaney supplied this dangerous ball which was deflected clear, and look, Magilton was unmarked then. And the goalkeeper didn't get a touch to this ball, it was onto the top of the crossbar from the boot of the Northern Ireland International. And this is Darren Anderton. Klinsman shielded the ball well, and there's options here. Nick Barmby, Ronnie Rosenthal, Klinsman's waiting in the middle. And Ronnie Rosenthal knows that wasn't the best of passes. I don't even think that was a shot by Rosenthal. But that challenge in itself by Klinsman was to open up Southampton's overworked defence. And look, uh, Rosenthal was looking at trying to pick out Klinsman when that woefully miscued cross went out of play. Heaney, oh there's an option here for Southampton, who are back in the lead, it's Matt Letizia again, he just loves scoring against Tottenham. Heaney's ball in was never really dealt with effectively, Shipley helped it on, and who was marking Matt Letizia? Well, Shipley created the equaliser for Letizia at the end of the first half. He's created another goal for his captain there. Well, in this topsy-turvy game, Southampton are ahead once again. 
Southampton took the lead, then two goals for Spurs, then two for Southampton. And incredibly, that's 13 goals now between these two teams in three hours of football this season. Oh, we uh, may struggle to get up to the eight goals these two sides provided in the FA Cup fifth round replay here almost a month ago. Who knows? Sheringham. Klinsman Bobby! Oh, he just couldn't find an opening. This is Rosenthal, though. Grobolos lost it, and do we have another goal? Teddy Sheringham scores. Well, every time Southampton find the net, Spurs come straight back. Sheringham started the move, laying the ball off to Klinsman. Barnby might have scored. Rosenthal was involved from Anderton's cross, and Grobelar should have kept that one out. That has to go down as another mistake. He made a present of the ball to Teddy Sheringham after 17 minutes. And this was another present for Sheringham, who slams home his 20th goal of the season. There's an air of disbelief about this football match now. The Southampton fans thought they'd seen everything when Spurs won 6-2 here. Letizia, still Letizia! It would have been one of the goals of the season had he beaten Ian Walker then. Oh, his skill on the ball was truly sublime then. Klinsman. Anderton. Well, if you could find a bookmaker right at this moment you'd certainly want to bet there's going to be more goals in this game can't believe it's going to end at 3-3 Rosenthal Barmby's ball is intercepted, that could be dangerous. I wonder if Tottenham are going to be short-handed here. Charlton. Letizia. That's a great tackle by Dean Austin. Heaney's cross. Just about got clear. Another goal! Jim Magilton! It's 4-3! Well, the ball pinballed around that Tottenham penalty area before it fell onto the boot of Jim Magilton and his volley was struck sweetly past Ian Walker. Maybe there was a touch of good fortune as the ball ricocheted into Magilton's path. And Southampton take the lead once again. We've had three goals in five minutes. I wish I would have found a bookmaker. Madison, there's a real sense of urgency now about Southampton. Dodd with the cross. Shipley's in there. Seven goals, but only one goal separates the teams. Letizia took a deflection and rather luckily fell straight into the path of Ian Walker. Letizia took it wide of Darren Anderton. And who did it hit? It was David Howells who got in the way. Barmby. Klinsman, oh! 
He and Sheringham went for the same ball. Klinsman talks about a good understanding with Teddy Sheringham, but there wasn't one here. The two chase the same ball. Well, the referee is being urged by the Southampton fans to blow his whistle to signal the end of the game. Spurs giving it one last push. Mabbott's gone forward now for Tottenham. Can they find an equaliser? Grobelas come and takes the ball at the second attempt just to take the pressure off his defenders. And I wonder if this is Tottenham's last chance to rescue a point. Walker. It's all over. Southampton move outside the relegation zone. What an important win this is for the home side. It's only their second Premier League win of 1995. And it's been earned with two marvellous goals yes, yes. from Matt Letissier, who gives it the thumbs up. And the final score, Southampton 4, Spurs 3. A fighting Southampton performance, but they also had inspiration in the form of Matt Letizia, who really was the local hero. Between this match and the end of the season, Southampton put together a run which actually lifted them into the top half of the table. They won four more and lost only to Manchester United and Liverpool. They finally finished 10th, just three places below Tottenham. <laughs>